I call this tale the Soul Stealer. In a silent house that once rang with the yakety yak of malicious gossip, sits a photograph of a girl and her parents. Nothing unusual in that, except that the parents are smiling, but the girl is crying. You mustn't feel sorry for her, though. The girl's name was Poppy, a vicious gossip monger who owned six mobile phones so that she could conduct simultaneous six-way conversations with her six brainless friends. They would blather on for the whole six hours between school ending and bed starting. Poppy spouted rumours and lies till her lips were numb. Her parents hated this mindless chatter so much that one day they told Poppy that mobile phones microwaved the brain. Imagine what must be happening inside your head, Poppy dear, with six phones. Your brains have probably been microwaved into scrambled egg by now. Next time you put your head on one side, it'll dribble out your ear. Poppy was horrified. Imagine putting her head on a boy's shoulder and leaving scrambled egg on his shirt. Oh, I get it. You're trying to stop me gossiping by splitting me up from my phones. Well, here's some gossip you've failed. I'm not getting rid of them. Not even if we were to buy you a Nockison 5000 to replace them. <gasps> Poppy's father was fiendishly clever. The Nockison 5000 had a digital camera. It was the all-singing, all-dancing, must-have mobile that every child wanted. Instead of improving her behaviour, however, having a camera phone simply made it worse. She became the centre of attention. Me, Poppy, me! No, me! Now take my picture! You'd have thought none of them had ever seen a camera before. Only one girl refused to be photographed. Hello, Anna. Don't point that thief at me. Go away. Thief? I haven't stolen anything. Only my soul. <laughs> If only Poppy had listened, but she was too busy being the bad girl, pursuing her new best sport of photo blackmail. It started in the loos, snapping photos under the cubicle doors. Oi, what's going on? You have just been captured on my camera, and unless you give me all the sweets in your pocket, I shall put this photo on the notice board. But everyone will see it. Oh, yeah. I hadn't thought of that. All right, here, take them. I hope you washed your hands. <laughs> <laughs> she hid behind the bike sheds and secured evidence of illicit kissing. <laughs> Oi, you two, that snog's going to cost you dear. What's going? What are you? Give us your cap. Poppy, please, don't tell anyone. I'm going out with Donna. That is Donna. Is it? Yeah. Who am I going out with, then? She caught classmates copying homework. Teacher's going to see what I've just seen. You can't. You wouldn't. I would, I could, but I won't. Not if you do my homework for a year. A year? All right, two. <laughs> Say hard cheese. Poppy's camera was a weapon of mass destruction, making everyone else's life a misery. It's hardly a criminal offence. I think you'll find that the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981 expressly forbids the picking of wildflowers. You might not think it's important, but there are several nice policemen who do. What do you want this time? Full control over the TV remote at all times. Right. And a holiday in Ibiza. Oh. Smile for the camera. Poppy, you little sneak. I'll take those winnings, Granny, unless you want me to report you to your gambling counsellor. Young people today, no respect for an old lady's addictions. That snack's gonna cost you big time, diet boy. 
Well, it wasn't me. The camera never lies, Dad. OK, what do you want this time? I want you to sign these. Poppy cannot come to school today because she's a genius. There's one for every day of the year. Ha ha ha! Poppy's prying eye had turned her into a bully. It's only a picture, you sissy. It won't hurt. But bullies always come a cropper, as she found out the next day. Heck, camera outside. Why? Because cameras steal the soul. They take part of you and lock it into picture forever. Not another loony. He is my father. Do not mock the soul stealer, or he will steal your soul away. Prove it, said Poppy, taking his photograph. <coughs> this was her mistake. That night, whilst admiring her gallery of shame, as villains are wont to do, she noticed something that made her blood run cold. In the background of every photograph she had taken, there was a face, blurred but unmistakable. It was the Soul Stealer. And while Poppy wondered why new objects materialised in the photographs, dismembered body parts like the building bricks of a corpse. First a hand, then a hand and a foot, then a hand, a foot and a knee. The more photographs Poppy looked at, the more parts of this body appeared, until suddenly... There was a headless figure in the frame. And she recognised that necklace. It was hers. What am I doing in my own photographs? This is you, isn't it? This is your revenge. I have stolen your soul. As Poppy watched, her face appeared on the photograph with a digital camera pressed to her eye. Watch the birdie, me. There was a flash as Poppy took her own photograph and then she was gone. Her parents never saw her again. Not in the flesh. A few days later, her mother noticed the photograph on the mantelpiece. Look, George, look. This photo of you and me at Margate. On our honeymoon. That's right. I don't remember Poppy being there, do you? I don't think she was born. Which, of course, she wasn't. Which meant that Poppy's stolen soul had been sent to live in that photograph forever! And that, in case you hadn't worked it out for yourself, is why she's always crying! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>